Uh, well, uh, Jack, it was your mate and mine, James Morrow, who claims to have coined the nickname Health Hazard for... Uh, <laughs> Uh, he probably nicked it from someone else. It was probably your probably. idea, Jack. It was probably one of yours. But He's anyway. always stealing them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, there goes my phone. Oh, no. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks. I've got to do a show on Sunday now. Anyway, uh, Jack, you've got a great story on the Sky News website, which, of course, you look after. Uh, pretty grim story. Talk us through it. Well, I, th I think that the way that China and the World Health Organization has handled the coronavirus crisis will go down undoubtedly as one of the biggest scandals in modern human history. We now know that uh, the, the actions alone have been quite deadly. There's been a study from the University of Southampton which has come out saying that if they had acted just three weeks earlier, there would be 66% less cases and if you follow the data trend, 66% less deaths. Now, if they had um, acted even longer than that, it could have gone up to 95%. So essentially they're saying that if the World Health Organization didn't listen to China, responded a lot sooner, because we do know they were actually warned uh, in December about, uh, about this, and then they came up with this obscure reason from the Chinese government that, well, we don't think it's human-to-human -human contact, despite at the point when they made that statement there were actually 12,000 cases in China. I don't know if they all ran into bats at that point. But we, we, we now know that there are actually very, very dire ramifications. I'm not going to pretend to understand how the statisticians have, have pulled together this data, but it was actually uh, done by a doctor who was funded by the Bill Gates Foundation. Now, we know Bill Gates is actually heavily involved in the World Health Organization, so we do know there is a big... There, there is, it's a very legitimate study, and these figures were, were very, very important, I think, in, in telling the story of, of how soon you should act and what are the ramifications. Fascinating story. I urge people to go on to skynews.com.au to check that out. Corinne, um, just your thoughts on that. And are you or I going to uh, explain to Jack that it's fewer deaths, not less deaths? There's one of us has got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. I'm happy to, Good, be, thank you. to be the grammar princess. <laughs> um, I just really, really hope that we come to the other side of this uh, pandemic and learn some lessons. We've really got to learn the lessons from this. China lied and people died and I know that's been a really popular hashtag flying around on social media but we really really have to wake up and we have to learn some lessons and we have to um, take something from this we can it cannot be business as usual when we get to the other side of the bridge as we keep talking about uh, now Corinne um, I'm admiring your uh, apartment or your house where you're in but the uh, <laughs> property market is expected to fall by as much as 30% as a result of the coronavirus. This is what they're telling us. Uh, who knows? Let's hope not, but there you go. But if it does, experts are suggesting that this could be the perfect chance for those first home buyers. You know, those millennials who've been whining and whinging for the last decade? Well, here's your chance, guys. What do you think? Well, what are they going to whinge about next? In theory, <laughs> yes, you know, we've got incredibly low interest rates. Investors have backed off. But anyone who's getting real-time advice on this would be being advised to sit tight. We don't actually know. Like Some of those numbers that I think um, have been coming out about the housing market, they're worst-case scenario, you know, 20%, 30%, I think even I read this week. So at this point, if, if, the, um, if the numbers keep heading in, this, in the right direction and the curve uh, can, can continues to be flattened in the way that we appear to be seeing at the moment, I would really, really hope that property won't take such a dent as that and we won't go near those figures. But uh, nobody has any idea. You know, we've, we've, first of all, we've got to get to the other side of Easter. You know, let's just take um, one step at a time here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Jack, you'd be looking at moving into uh, buying a nice pad in uh, Marrickville or Newtown or somewhere like that, wouldn't you? That'd be nice and handy for work. I guess potentially if I had psychic powers, but I <laughs> guess this goes back to the point. You, we, we don't know. And uh, no matter how much of an expert you think you are, you simply don't know how this is going to play out because the government might decide all of a sudden to extend the lockouts for another six months. The economic... Uh, damage could, could be so disastrous that it could tank it even further. So the last thing that you should do if you're a young uh, prospective home buyer is, is buy a property which is going to be devalued another 15% or true. another That's 20% true. and then all of a sudden you owe the bank far more than you actually owe in your original investment. Uh, my advice would be to wait and just wait until the volatility ends.